Hello, this is Matthew Robert Payne. Uh, this is called What Does the Church Need? Uh, this is uh, an interesting subject uh, to bite off. Uh, one of five subjects that I've uh, decided to do today. Uh, I hope uh, you can hear over the birds uh, saying hello. They seem to want to have something to say too. Uh, what does the church need? Well, there's some things that the church needs. The church needs prophets and apostles and teachers to come in and open their blind eyes. At present, uh, many churches believe that once you've said a one paragraph sinner's prayer, you can do nothing to lose your salvation. They don't believe a person can even walk away from salvation. Many churches believe that once you've said your one paragraph sinner's prayer, there's nothing you can do. Like I said, there's seven parables of Jesus that mention a Christian can go to hell. Right? The sheep and the goats parable mentions that if you don't act like a sheep, you're going to hell. The five foolish virgins are people who are more interested in the love of the world and the things of the world than they are in the Holy Spirit and God's will. They're the foolish virgins. They go to hell. There's the person who doesn't forgive his brother after he's been forgiven a debt himself. He goes to hell. There's the man who was at the feast and uh, he had the wrong wedding clothes on. He goes to hell. There's... Um, there's seven of them anyway. There, there, there's uh, a number of them there. There's um, the, the older brother of the prodigal son who doesn't go into the party. He goes to hell. Uh, there's five there so far. There's seven. Uh, um, I can't, uh, uh, can't think of... Uh, uh, John 15 says, if you bear that, you don't bear any fruit. Uh, um, the parable of the four soils, three of those people who don't produce fruit go to hell. Uh, according to John 15, if you don't bear fruit, you go to hell. You cut off the vine and thrown into the fire. Uh, so there's six. So um, the church needs to have their eyes open because currently there's blind teachers leading people in to blindness. I was talking to a pastor um, I was talking to a pastor um, a few weeks ago, a pastor I admire, and he was saying what's, what's the difference, you know, tell me about preachers and stuff and the fivefold ministry, what's the difference between a preacher and a teacher and I said some people are gifted with the ability to teach but a teacher doesn't make a good pastor. A pastor comes from a person with a lot of love who's a shepherd who's able to look after and nurture and care for the sheep. And uh, you can have a teacher who's a good pastor and he's a pastor and a teacher, or you can have a good pastor who's not very good at teaching, or you can have a teacher who thinks he's a pastor and not very good at pastoring. He said, well, that's what I think the majority of pastors are, teachers who shouldn't be pastors. And uh, so that was a good uh, idea for him. So the church needs pastors who can teach. Uh, the church needs uh, more people in the fivefold ministry. Uh, the church needs more people willing to lay down their lives for God. Uh, there was a study in the United States that only 10% of Christians knew what their spiritual gifts were and out of that 10% who knew what their spiritual gifts are were uh, only 10% of them walked in their spiritual gifts so 1% of the church was actually doing what they were gifted to do by God that means 99% of the church was ineffective what the church needs is some understanding on what the spiritual gifts are and activation into those gifts and encouragement and mentoring into operating in those gifts. So the church becomes 100% effective, not 99% uh, ineffective. The, the church needs apostles and prophets to teach them truth, to
to bring repentance to the church. The church needs revivalists, people coming in to teach revival, living, uh, holiness, that uh, live a life holy and sanctified to God so that, that the lives of the Christians are holy, not sinful lives. The church needs people to come in and teach what it is to be crucified to Christ. Uh, to, to live a daily life of, 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 of laying down your life and a, a life of being set apart for God uh, only doing what God wants you to do each day not living a life unto the flesh not living a life watching TV every day and doing the things of the flesh but living a life doing what God wants you to do each day the church needs people who really are interested in God, not Sunday worshippers, not Sunday singers, but people who every day, every single day of their life are doing God's will and doing what the Holy Spirit leads them to do. The church needs people to know how to be led by the Holy Spirit and then obey the Holy Spirit each day. The church needs people who can hear the Holy Spirit and actively walk and do what the Holy Spirit teaches them to do each day. The Holy Spirit, uh, the church needs teachers who teach the truth, who know the truth of, of what uh, the Bible contains. And the church needs people in their church reading their own Bible and being taught by the Holy Spirit what their Bible means. And the church needs more than anything, people who are willing to apply the Bible and obey the Bible and do what the Bible teaches. The church needs a whole lot less gossipers and prideful people and rebellious people who've got everything bad to say about other members of the church and the pastors. The church could do without the gossipers and the people in rebellious states who don't like the pastors all those people should be kicked out of the church and given some time to be churchless for a while before they open their mouth again. The church needs proper church discipline. The people that are out of order need to be dealt with properly so that they stop being out of order, so that they feel that they're loved, so that they understand that they're loved. Someone who's not treated with proper discipline doesn't feel that they're loved. The church needs more of that. The church needs vision. The, the whole church in each community, each city, each town, the collective church, every denomination needs a vision for that town. They need to work together on that vision to take the city, to take the town, and uh, to have a collective vision on what they want to do in that town. The, the church needs unity. They need to walk together as brothers and sisters in the Lord, no matter what denomination, no matter what theology they believe in. They need to walk together. Satan's pretty organized. Uh, the church isn't organized as a body. The church needs to be uh, working together and walking together in unity and in love and compassion. The church needs God's love and compassion for each other and for the broken hearted lost people in the world. The church needs to understand the Father's heart and Jesus' heart and Jesus' compassion. Church needs to be able to walk like Jesus walked. Needs to be able to react like Jesus walked. The church needs living apostles like the first apostles. The church needs people who are in leadership, who have got the anointing and the power of, of, of the proper apostles, the first apostles in the book of Acts. The church needs real mentors and real leaders and real examples to follow. There are some of the things that the church needs. I hope uh, that's been enlightening to you.